Welcome to Model Engineers Laser. My name is Holly and this is part 22 of our Jack build. Since our last video, we have done a slight piece of work. I'm just going to turn the engine rain uh, where we have fitted the regulator handle. Just as we've been playing, some of you have seen we did a sneaky peek video of what we've been up to just in preparation. And to do that, all we did, let's just adjust the camera for you to see. She's just trying to not make it jerky. There we go. Is regulator handle just slid on and it was a matter of tightening the grub screw that's just here. Um, and then it moves quite freely. For those of you who are familiar with our videos, there is a four-year-old apprentice on the loose, so if you hear background noise, I'm sorry. It's fun and games of doing this with children in tow. There we go. So there she is at the moment. We're on page nine of the Lady and Boiler Kit to help us get ready for preparing the chassis for steam, for running. So in the instructions it talks about lubrication and it talks about lubricating all the working parts so that's talking about your motion work and makes some keynotes about making sure you don't over oil because they can attract dirt and grime and then the grit sticks in and it can make problems with your running and then again if it's too thin it'll evaporate very quickly as the engine gets warm and then you get dry running um, they recommend using a 2050 motor oil for the external lubrication the internal lubrication is with steam oil now roundhouse very kindly supply you with a pot of steam oil to get you going um and it's put in the lubricator here uh, i'll explain how it's done and then we're going to go outside and do it because the next step will be putting in the butane gas which we need to do in a well ventilated area and i also don't want to get oil on the table inside the house so it can go on outside um, what we're going to do is take off the top of the lubricator here and undo this section here for um, any water that may have got into the lubricator to escape um, and you just need to be extra careful to make sure that we don't get any air in there but for now we shall move outside sorry if the lighting has changed but we've moved outside now and you will get all the joys of background noise of the little birds that are in the tree next to me. Hopefully you can hear me over them. As I've said in our previous series, I'm new to this as well. So I still follow the instructions. I have no shame in seeing them out loud. So the first part we're going to do is the lubrication of the external parts. This is where we talked about the motion. Um, they shouldn't need too much doing because we have already run it on compressed air and it has had some oiling but it is going to need a bit more it's just it's number three one it's just going to need a couple of drips here and there inside Too much on that one, but it's dripped off quite nicely. Um, not very exciting, but it's going to be the back. It's there, and that's really all it needs. If, um, in this case, if you've been making it along, because like I said, we have have oiled it before, so it's just keeping on top of it. Um, you can see why I didn't want to do this on my table now. Now we're doing the internal lubrication. Following the instructions, it says removed the nail cap from the top. Um, it's just with a screwdriver to loosen it up. There we go. Don't lose it and don't get grit in it or anything like that. Um, 
slacken off the drain screw which is this one here um, just two or three turns so one two and there's that water coming out from where we had a pay before which is the whole point of doing it um, now we are going to no, do not remove it just say that in the instructions don't remove it any water in the lubricator will run out through the drain screw which we have seen Tighten the drain screw. Okay, let's just. Keep trying it back up again. There's a little ring on that. That is only just doing it when you're tight. And refill with steam oil supplied. So this is the steam oil that came with it. It's all labelled roundhouse, the 220 oil. It take time filling the lubricator, especially when cold, as the oil takes time to run down and may trap air bubbles. Both cap and drain screws are fitted with O-rings. Yeah, we've, we've talked about that. So we're just going to... You can't see is so I'm looking at the top I'm trying not to flood it so I can give chance for air to escape so just sort of pouring it down the side so any air can creep up through the top moving through quite nicely and there we go Probably overfilled it. Actually, there we go. Let's stay on that and then put. Screwdriver slightly too big for that, but it needs to be pinched tight. The next step in the instructions from lubricating is filling the gas tank. I'm actually going to fill the boiler next rather than the gas tank because I have got my water to hand and I haven't got the gas to hand. So unscrew this section here. This is really clear in the instructions. Because the water is going to get hot, we need to allow room for expansion. And the way the instructions say to do that is to fill the boiler completely with water and then remove 30 mil. So with the syringe that you get sent and the extension tube, we're going to fill it up first and then we're going to remove it to 30. It talks about using um, distilled water or if you live in a soft water area, you can use tap water or rain water or water from a dehumidifier, um, providing that it's adequately filtered. You can use paper wine filters and it talks all about this and make sure the small particles that may be in the water have been removed. I don't have any of that. So I've boiled some water in the kettle and we've allowed it to go cool. And we're now going to fill the boiler. And it will take more than you expect, if memory serves. Still had water in from when I was playing the other day. Yep, there's a bit of air in there. There we go, it's definitely full. And now I'm going to insert. The tube and now I need to withdraw 30 mil back 
and that's the give. The water room to expand and put oh sorry kick the camera and put the plug back and there we have it i've gone and fetched the gas so i can go back to filling the gas tank now and i'm not going to read you the whole instructions out because if you're building this um a long or for yourselves you'll be able to get the instructions but the it does explain a lot about the different kinds of gases that you can use about butane and or isobutane gas um like you get in a cigarette lighter and it talks about preferred for economy and all the rest of it um we have butane gas there um so before attempting to fill the gas tank, make sure the gas control valve is closed by turning it clockwise. So this is the gas control valve. I'm going to turn it. It is turned clockwise. It's anti-clockwise. That's clockwise. Um, Neighbours dog barking. Sorry. Um, on the top of the butane gas, we've screwed the... Um, adapter on that you're going to need for your gas tank you can get these from most uh, model suppliers we don't because we're laser cutting but these are quite readily available reading the instructions invert the gas canister basically means turn it upside down and place the nozzle over the gas filler valve that's this tiny little section here let's see if i can uh, zoom in a little bit A bit jerkily zoomed, it wasn't very graceful. There we go, you can just see there's a little, a little bit in there. It does tell you on here to support the tank from underneath and press the canister down. The gas will be heard hissing as it enters the tank and a small amount will escape around the valve. This is normal and is due to the gas tank venting as the liquid enters. After about 20-30 seconds, liquid gas will emerge from the valve, showing that the tank is full. Remove the canister immediately. I suspect that it will be on the 20 end of the second rather than the 30 second because it has done a bit of running so it might not be completely empty but it may have also evaporated from when we last ran so you can't see but my hand's coming underneath my engine to support it there we go you saw it come out didn't take a lot to fill it as you saw and that is the gas full this bit is not in the instructions um what i've done is i've got a little bit of soapy water and it's just a, just using my fingers it's just a matter about putting it on your joints for your first running because what we're looking for is leaks as you can see look there straight away these are the bubbles coming out I'll zoom in. Look at that. That's what you're looking for. That means I've got a leak. That's that pipe where it needs a bit of attention. But I'm going to carry on looking at other things to see if there are any other leaks. Let's just wait in a few minutes to see if any the bubbles appear all right down here there's nothing happening here nothing happening there but there's a significant leak happening here pressure's gone that's where the leak stopped or oh, it's still going there we go to be honest i can smell it so i knew there was a leak 
You can smell it anyway as you fill it in, but there'd been some time between, between me pressing pause and coming back and getting ready to light that I could still smell it and I'm outside. It should have gone quite significantly, it was quite strong. But it's quite clear. Oh, sorry, I've just knocked the camera. The little bubbles there of the leak. Just had a spanner to it to tighten it up. Uh, we'll need to do it again now. Just going to flood it again with some soapy water. There's nothing coming out really there, but it may be that it's all leaked out. So, same rules apply. So that's definitely full. Have we got any bubbles? That looks pretty good. No bubbles. Oh, I'll go and get a cloth and dry it up now. The instructions say about lighting the burners to light it from the top of the chimney. I don't actually have the smoke box door on, so I'm going to go through the smoke box and I need to turn the gas regulator on first. And you should hear it pop when it lights. Just quarter of a turn. There we go. Hit that. That's it. That's it. I don't know if you can hear it. As it ignited, it had an audible little pop. And I'm hoping it'll stay lit because it's quite windy today. The apprentice is about to join us, so it may get even noisier. Oh, I thought it blew out then. It's just a matter of waiting for it to get under pressure now. I'm going to pause the camera because you don't need to hear it. Just sit there doing nothing while it gets up to pressure. Just approaching 40 uh, psi, so I've turned the camera on so you can see what happens. Uh, we've released a bit more gas through for it to burn, a bit more free throwing as we went through, speed up the process. There you go, she's starting to, if you can see that actually, a bit of steam coming out. Not nearly at 40. No, I'm not 50, 40. Hey, 50! <laughs> 50 it's on a bit gentle to start with, so we opened it up a bit more. She's just about to touch 40. I'm not sure if you can see the steam coming out of that. It's not picking it up on camera, but you can start to see a bit of steam coming through the valve here. And the sun's coming out, so it's getting warmer. Oh, you can just about see it on the camera now. There we go. There we go, spitting nicely. And she's at 40. 
to turn it off a bit. Leave really? it the same. Brilliant. So we're going to put it in gear. Four gear. Feels a little tin. Okay, we'll be, we'll be On and it's meant to do that. Oh, there she goes. Come on. You can do it. There we go. But it is beautiful. Pretty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean that has a little What does that mean? <laughs> Go round and round and round. <laughs> it's going quite fast, yeah. Happy bunny. Happy bunny? Yeah, because it's Easter. Easter? Yeah. Another story. We're talking about steam engines today. And look at the trains last week. And look at the trains last week. We went to the trains last week, yeah. Yeah. We've got trains at home this week. Yeah. And look at the picnic. For me, picnic. We could have a picnic. we set out here if you want to watch the train. Yeah. Well, this is still filming. I don't know if people want a video of it just going around or if people will be bored. Mommy. I could quite act, watch happily watch Mommy. it go around. But I built it, so I don't Mommy, know. I think it on. I'm going to be in my life. Yeah. I'm going to give it an interesting background. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I'll leave it film for a little bit. If you want to fast forward, that's up to you. If you want to sit and watch it go around, that's up to you as well. But I'm just going to let it run. Yeah, it... In our earlier video, we talked that it needed to run for was it four hours each way around it. Kept a log of it, so yeah. I, I am just going to let Erica. You know, how many how many hours does it need to go around each way? Four. four. Okay. And four and five. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to let it run until it runs out of water or gas, okay. and then I'll start the video back up again. And there we have it. It ran for a good few minutes, 15 minutes or so. Um, and it ran out of water before it ran out of gas. Um, well, it didn't actually run out of water. I was playing on the cautious side. It probably got down to about 20 PSI before I gave it up. Um, there's still a little bit of gas in there, but I'm going to let it cool down now. 
and then clean it up and put it away and I'll leave it for that for this video just so you can see that it has actually run and our next video will get on and do a bit more building thanks for joining us if you're not already please uh, remember to like and subscribe to the videos and the channels and it gets a bit more widespread for us and it's a, a free way you can support us as a small business and thanks again bye